in this battleground of life where friends turn foes and foes turn friends where nothing is clear the only thing certain death in this battleground of life as sadhak seekers what are the attitude action qualities that will support us our practice sadhana namaskar i am damini and with this in mind coinciding with the upalaksha of janmashtami i have attempted an unpacking of a shlok from the ancient most and the ever contemporaneous source of wisdom shrimad bhagavad gita in this small verse shri krishna packs nine powerful life transforming concepts each linked with the other request you to please listen with your full presence shamo tamas tapah shochya kshantir arjav mevacha gyanam vigyanam astikyam brahm karma swabhavaja serenity restrain austerity purity for parents inner alignment knowledge assimilated knowledge faith these are the action expressions attitudes that emerge from the natural disposition of a brahman brahman hey hang on hang on hang on did i just hear you say brahman isn't that the political as in you have to be born into a certain you know like upper caste kind of thing well yes and no to proceed we need to know two different but similar sounding words now we all have heard of brahman implying a social group uh, for the lack of a better word caste but there is another forgotten word the basis of that a word called brahmana again not to be confused with brahma the creator god <laughs> brahman is a word hindus have for the ultimate reality the absolute all that is it comes from the root brih which means ever expanding more 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 limitless ultimately free really so no matter what our birth no matter what our profession a seeker of the absolute reality a seeker of truth consciousness bliss a seeker of brahman is a brahman so in this battlefield of life call it the marketplace if you like for the seeker of the ultimate what kind of attitudes will be harmonious with her calling her swabhava that is what we are going to look at imagine the battlefield centuries upon centuries ago the mahabharat about to begin there shri krishna sketching before arjun two imaginary concentric circles the qualities are presented in two sets 6 plus 3 in the outer circle six qualities in the inner three in the outer he describes what i call paridhi sadhana dealing with the stage of the world relationships with others in the inner circle he describes the antrik sadhana dealing with our own inner stage our relation with the self in the outer circle like little planets are rotating these six qualities in sets of 2 plus 1 2 plus 1 two sister qualities to be actively practiced and one that results from the practice the first quality harmonious with the meditator is shama serenity when our mind is calm not full of the ripples of the world its flux of happenings kabhi khushi kabhi gham joy sorrow pain confusion constant waves they do not disturb our inner melody we remain 
centered, calm, ever melodious. Shama, serenity. But, for there is always a but, <laughs> you know and I know, that is not our state right now. Hmm? Joy, success makes us feel hyper-related, kushi, kushi, kushi. Sorrow, failure makes us feel hyper-depressed, dukkham, dukkham. We swing sometimes high, sometimes low emotional roller coasters. Hmm? Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that as long as we enjoy it. But hota ye hai that again and again and again in that same circle, that same story, let's say it can be a little limiting and a little boring. Hmm? That is when kicks in the sister quality of Shama, Dhamma. When serenity is disturbed for the meditator is prescribed the action path of Dhamma. What does that mean? A restraint of the senses. Say your boss or your loved one is angry. She shouts at you. That anger causes within you ripples. Your inner serenity is totally disturbed. You experience wave after wave of hurt, of anger, of sadness. At that point, the action path harmonious for a sadhak is not to biff back, boom. You do this to me, I will do this to you. Up the bus, bachu. No. The path is to withdraw. Shut all the doors of our senses. Move inwards. Dhamma, restrain a shutter down. Dukan, band. <laughs> But again, that alone is not enough. Sure, in the world of relationships, we will not be creating a vicious circle. Call it the karmic circle. Wounds upon wounds, anger upon anger. Nekaringe. But what about inside us? Huh? I mean, there is a me right now who wants to go out there and punch a piff bath. What about that? throbbing, pulsating, vital energy. That's where kicks in the second set of qualities in the Parithi Sadhana. Shachyam. Cleanliness. Cleanliness. Not just um, Swachya Bharat, but Swachya Chitta. <laughs> the action attitude harmonious is not to judge, but to lovingly let go of the emotional residues within. The tiny little mud particles, the pent up anger, bubble bubble, the hate, simmer simmer, the irritation, krrr, the sorrow, sob, to release and thus to purify these energy clouds that are covering our mind sky. Shotchen, inner cleanliness. But this again is not enough. Huh? It is not enough to be at peace, akele akele, alone. The test of our sadhana's maturity, our maturity, is in experiencing peace in the jagat, in the world, in relationships, in the market. Remember the battlefield? This is where the context of Gita, the Mahabharat, shines oh so brilliantly. Shri Krishna now offers the most beautiful skill set for any meditator in the battlefield of life. The sister disposition of Shachim, Kranti, forbearance. Oh, no, no. That does not mean tum jo bhi zulm karoge hum sahenge, sahenge, sahenge. <laughs> what forbearance means is common sense. Not just your phone is smart, but you are smart. You know, and I know. We all want the other to change. And you know, and I know that no matter how much we try, the other will not, cannot change. That's just not the nature of things. So it is common sense to understand. Seriously, by putting ourselves in the other person's shoes, no matter how wrong they may seem, now, please note, this we can only do after the peace within has been restored. After we are sorted within, we can and we need to see the story from the others, 
perspective. That's maturity. Their life, some that we know of, and much, much more lifetimes upon lifetimes that we have absolutely no idea about. They act from that. That seeing, that understanding brings about kranti. Let's say being at peace with them as they are, that is shanti, is best for our own blood pressure. Samajdari. In the outer circle, our paridhi sadhana, the sister dispositions work as 2 plus 1, right? So it's shama plus dhamma result in tapas, which is austerity. In other words, an economical use of our energy. And shotchim and kshanti result in arjav, an inner alignment, where thoughts, words and actions are not thinking something, saying something and doing something completely different. Kahin pe nigahin, kahin pe nishana. Now, arjav, thought, word, action, carry the same essence, the essence of who we are, not split or divided, but crystallized, one. After this oneness in the paridhi, in the stage of the world, Sri Krishna sketches the antarik, the inner circle. The first he says, jnana, knowledge of the self, gathered from the texts, from wise folks, from life. Let us say study and theoretical intellectual clarity. What is what? The second most interestingly is called the jnana, assimilated knowledge. The words that we read and study are first chewed, then digested, made our own. Blood, bones and marrow. Vigyan means that the words don't just remain something borrowed, rateve, external, floating on the surface of our mind. But they are now us. The last and the ultimate cue Shri Krishna offers is Astikabuddhi. An attitude of the mind which is open, which is total. Not a naysayer, but a yeesayer. Open to learning from friends, from foes, from texts, from teachers. Open to life. A big enthusiastic yes. Shraddha van. Not blindness, mind you. A total openness to experimentation. With the knowledge, with the sutras. And all of this is verifiable by our own experience. But for that experience to happen, pehle, astik buddhi, an innocence, childlike trust, openness and totality, samagrata. With this openness and totality, in tomorrow evening's meditation session, we are going to be celebrating Sri Krishna by diving very masti say into the rasic practice of these six plus three powerful offerings by Sri Kanha himself. For without practice, without sadhana, all these words will never become vijnana, our blood, bones and marrow, us. <laughs>